Hello everyone. This is me again, the director for our New Zealand registered not-for-profit charitable educational trust common knowledge. I'm the director and the founder, which meant that I created the trust in the 1990s from the work that I and hundreds of ordinary fathers and mothers like you developed in the early 1970s. We nitpicked the crap out of childbirth skills and developed them so that we could feel empowered throughout the birth we had with our baby. When I gave birth in 1970, first in the United States, the very first childbirth preparation classes were being taught, Lamaze and Bradley, and in New Zealand, where the trust is and where I've lived, was Grantly Dick Reed, Childbirth Without Fear. And that's what we're going to talk about, childbirth and fear. But in the 1970s, we learned skills. That was what the childbirth preparation was about. So we went into hospitals in the United States, and we just tried to use the skills that Bradley and Lamaze and in New Zealand, Grantley Dick Reed, had suggested that low-risk women should use in order to achieve three narrow goals, natural birth, pain-free labor, without medical interventions. The skills worked for some of us, but they didn't work for many of us because the belief was that you had to be low risk. So us who had high risks, we weren't certain that the skills would work for us or if our risks changed, they didn't work or if things changed or we didn't have what we considered to be a normal birth or whatever. So a lot of times the skills just didn't work and they weren't adaptable or adjustable or sustainable. But at that point in 1970, there was a belief worldwide, globally, throughout time, that women suffered in childbirth. And women were terrified of birth because they didn't want to suffer. And suffering had nothing to do with having a problem. It had to do with the fact that women lacked skills. Because women throughout time have been faced with a global truth. There is no way to know what your birth is going to be like. It's just a global truth. That's true today. That's why the modern medical profession does so much assessment, monitoring, and procedures. Everybody, women, want to know if we can reduce the risks. Because there's no way to know what our birth is going to be like. And babies don't come to plan. So when I gave birth in 1970... It was normal for women to be afraid of birth. We didn't think anything of it. We just thought it was absolutely normal and natural to be anxious about our birth because we didn't know what it was going to be like. But when I gave birth last in 1982, the natural birth movement and home birth midwifery movement had started to give a global message. And part of their global message is that women shouldn't be afraid of birth that birth was this instinctive thing that we knew. And we can understand how people think this way. Women are the only ones who get pregnant. So you think that we would know how to do it. But we have to ask ourselves, is that a reality? Is, is it true that just because we do something physiologically, that it means we know how to do something? And the reality is, is that no, just because it happens to us doesn't mean we know how to do anything about it. I mean, take being horny. That's natural. We all have the urge. Do we become a good lover instinctively? No, we have to learn skills. How about being hungry? We get hungry many times during the day. Does it mean we instinctively know how to cook? No, we have to learn the skills. Does it instinctively mean that our children know what's safe to put in their mouths? Not if you've had children. You know, we spend months and years taking things out of kids' mouths. So just because women get pregnant doesn't mean that we know how to birth. And we get anxious because there's no way to know what our birth's going to be like. And babies don't come to plan. And in fact, in all of my 50 years of experience in childbirth and being global in my understanding and having worked not involved in birth, but I've shared these skills throughout the world in very traditional communities as well, is that every society, every woman, every man, every society is anxious and fearful about pregnancy and birth. And really up until the age of five, um, more so at a newborn. And why is that as humans? Well, because pregnancy and childbirth and early, and early childhood 
is risky. Before immunizations, just immunizations, and there's a big issue now about vaccines that started really in the 1980s. Before vaccines, we could expect around the world up to 30% of all our children under the age of five to die of childhood diseases. That's why vaccines were developed. Vaccines weren't developed as a way for the government to control us or for the medical profession to impose interventions on us. It was because we didn't want our children to die of measles or to die of diphtheria or typhoid. I grew up during the polio epidemic. We were desperate to get a vaccine for polio. So you need to understand that fear of pregnancy and childbirth and early childhood is normal. It's hardwired into us. And so what I want to do is talk to you today about the gift of fear. A um, number of years ago, I listened to a man on Oprah um, called Gavin De Becker, and he had written this book called The Gift of Fear. Now, the, his book had to do with people sensing uncomfortable situations. And he talked about a woman who had been walking and she had these anxious moments because there was a person following her. And so when he went over her story, there were 35 moments where she felt anxious and did nothing about him. And she got mugged. So he talked a lot about how important it was to pay attention. And so what I did was to extrapolate what he was saying into this broad field called childbirth. And I want to talk to you about this today because this is a skill. And our trust, common knowledge, that holds the birthing better skills is all about skills. Mothers and fathers, all of us wanted to be skilled. And we wanted to be skilled for several reasons. One is in childbirth, we wanted to cope better, manage, work through, deal with, handle, stay on top of, and feel in control. So we didn't want to feel overwhelmed. We didn't want to suffer because that just made us more fearful. And that was more dis distressing when we suffered in childbirth. So we developed skills in the 70s to cope and manage better and work together better because Lamaze and Bradley and Grantley Dick Reed skills only focused on low-risk women and not on all of us because 100% of pregnant women are gonna give birth one way or another. And it's an activity each one of us is doing with our baby. So it makes common sense that all of us have skills to do work through the activity of birthing our baby one way or the other. So, but then as the medical profession began to become more sophisticated and modern women demanded a reduction of risks, and this is one of the funny stories that I, I sort of tell a lot, um, we had classical cesareans in the 1970s. Cesareans were, were done only to save our lives as women. And 95% of us labored, whether we had risks or whether we were low risk, whether we suffered or whether we coped well, whether we had short labors or we labored for days, whether we had good outcome or whether we had tragedies because the medical profession wasn't sophisticated enough. But we were just having our husbands come in. We wanted somebody to help us not suffer. We wanted to reduce our fear by having something to do. So fathers came in to labor, but they couldn't come into our cesareans because we got knocked out. This was such major surgery. And you know what happened in the 1980s? We started wearing bikinis. This is just absolutely bizarre. People just don't understand it, which meant we exposed our bellies. So those of us who had had cesareans had this scar that ran from our pubic bone to our navel, and we wanted to wear a bikini. So we put pressure on the medical community to come up with a different type of cesarean, which they did. It's called the bikini cut. They didn't make up that word, right? We demanded it. The low-line incision gave us the ability to try for a vaginal birth after a cesarean, not be left with a scar, for them to be able to use a spinal or epidural, which was getting to be new rather than knocking us out, and having fathers come into cesareans. And throughout the history of modern childbirth, we have demanded that they provide us with less risks. And that's because we feel frightened. And the natural birth movement told us not to feel frightened. And I have traveled for 50 years, and every culture is frightened of childbirth because they know it's a transitional period. Pregnancy, childbirth, and up to the age of five. If a kid can make it to five, 
pretty much they're going to live until they're 80 unless something happens. So we, and, and that's the re when people say, oh, people only used to live until 40, it's because 20 to 30 percent of the younger population died. It's not because we all died at 40. So what is the gift of fear? The gift of fear is really important for all of us to learn throughout life, absolutely, and something we need to be teaching our children. When we are afraid, what happens? What happens when you feel frightened? You become aware. You become hypervigilant. This is good. Right? It's good because that awareness is asking you so when I feel fear and I become aware, I pay more attention. So what do you pay attention to? Well, certainly you pay attention to external factors, but you also pay attention to internal factors. So, and COVID is a perfect example. For people who get COVID, this is a virus our bodies have never had. And those people who die, who get this Kaidosine storm, their body is having an intense reaction to this new virus. We feel the fear of our body trying to cope with something new. In childbirth or in pregnancy, when we are anxious and fearful, we are paying attention. And this is what we need to pay attention to because this is one of the great skills. Now, it is not in any of our birthing better resources because I actually had to limit some of this. We did the practical skills, but I talk about this a lot. So you're getting the skill today and who are, and please pass this on. Please subscribe. Please tell others about our YouTube channel and our birthing better. When you are frightened and you pay attention and you, what do you do first? You ask yourself this question, even though you don't know you're asking it. Am I at risk of dying or being seriously injured within the next five minutes? That's what, what we want to know. Is this fear real now? Okay, that's what we want to know right now. And if it is, what's the appropriate response? Get help or do something. So if you're driving a car and a kid runs across the road, that fear rises in us immediately, and we immediately begin to respond, okay? Because our mind and our body understand that in the next five minutes or less, I or that child or car can be dead or injured, and so we react. We're doing something for ourselves. But if we're pregnant, we can get outside help. So the first question you ask when fear rises in you is, am I or the situation going to be dead or seriously injured in five minutes? Get help or do something. And that makes common sense. This is the gift of fear. If it's not five minutes, extend the time frame out. You can extend it to an hour, up to 12 hours. Honestly, if you are in a flood or a hurricane or a tornado, you may have to extend out for a period of time or a war zone, right? Or labor, right? You have to, or a kid who's sick or us who's sick. So if you extend it out a period of time, are you, or the situation dead or seriously injured within the next up to 12 hours? If the answer is yes, do something or get help. That is the gift of fear. But after 12 hours, the fear doesn't go away because our observation needs to continue until there's a resolution. If five minutes or 12 hours, nothing happens, extend further. Just keep paying attention. It's either going to get worse, in which case do something or get help or it's going to resolve. So the gift of fear in pregnancy, the gift of fear in childbirth, you, we need to grow it. The natural birth movement since the 80s has been telling us, don't be afraid. It's a weakness. Just trust birth. And th this is why I'm doing this series. Because, the, the, and this is going to sound like I'm very much against the natural birth movement. I'm not against the natural birth movement. I am against the ideas and the words 
that have sprung forward from inaccurate perceptions. So for example, when the natural birth, natural, it's the word natural birth or normal birth or physiological birth, when those words are used, those words have been twisted to mean easy, good, good outcome, manageable. We know that. I, I had a natural birth, right? <laughs> I had a spontaneous physiological labor that in, implies everything was fine. In reality, throughout time, the words natural, normal, and physiological have always meant anything might happen. Now, anything doesn't mean there's a generic risk. There isn't. If I'm not pregnant with twins, I don't have a twin risk, right? But if I'm pregnant with a breech baby, uh, there may be a risk to my baby. If I have a heart problem, there may be a risk to me. And this is where the gift of fear is so important. It gives us the ability to, be, uh, to have observation and to respond rather than to react. Okay, a person driving a car and a kid runs across the road, it is better to have somebody respond than to react because a person reacting is just doing whatever, okay? So in pregnancy and childbirth, we need to grow this gift. If in pregnancy we feel that something is wrong, right now, we need to get help or do something, okay? If we think it might be wrong, up to 12 hours, we have to get help or do something. If we have to pay attention, it is either going to get worse or it's gonna to begin to resolve itself. But for pregnant women particularly, that anxiety never really goes away. And why is that? This is a gift. This isn't a problem, it's a gift. Because what happens after your baby's born? How many newborn babies can sit up and say to you, mommy, I don't feel well? None. They can't talk. Our children cannot tell us. They behave how they feel. They move, they make sounds. We have to interpret those words and sounds. We have to interpret them. If we have been told, don't be afraid in pregnancy, don't be afraid of birth, just trust it, then we're basically being told, just trust our newborn, whatever. And this is why we have so many people, particularly with first time mothers, go, going every time their baby moves, goes, what's the matter? Okay. They haven't been told how to grow their gift of fear. So everything puts them at a heightened level that this is a problem. This is why people who have a second baby have grown that gift of fear. They've been able to discern, is this an emergency? Is this almost emergency? Can I just pay attention to this? Can I just watch this? This is why parents with other children, second child, become so much more relaxed. But that's because we've been told not to be afraid. We need to be taught. And all of you listening to this, you need to be able to teach this to others. This is an idea. The idea is that the fear that we have in pregnancy is a gift. Okay, that's the idea. The words are we need to grow that gift of fear. And the actions we take are simple. Pay attention. And if we think that we need help within five minutes to 12 hours, seek it or do something. The actions are if we need to wait, if we wait past 12 hours, stay observant, okay? So that you know, you begin to trust your ability to be observant. This is so very important. I, my job after 50 years is to teach you the ideas of this new childbirth trend, teach you the words, teach you the actions. So our trust, Common Knowledge Trust, has in it all of the skills hundreds of fathers and mothers developed in the early 1970s and are now online birthing classes. We're not the only skills-based birthing method, so I'm not flogging our method. We just want people to become skilled because the idea behind the childbirth trend since the 80s that came forward from the natural birth movement 
was that childbirth, pregnancy and childbirth are normal life events that rarely require medical care. You should trust birth. You should make a birth plan. You know what you want at your birth. You should get it. Birth professionals should give you the birth that you want. And that the ideal birth is these three narrow goals. A natural birth, which is implied to have a good outcome. A pain-free labor, which implies that it's that you don't have pain during contractions, and that you have a birth without any medical assessments, monitoring, and procedures, what are now called interventions. These are narrow goals. These are the ideas, the words, and the actions of the natural birth movement in the home birth um, midwifery movement. That has failed us, and it failed us from the start because the ideas were faulty. No fault of anybody's. But the ideas were faulty because the word pregnancy and childbirth are normal life events mean that anything that might happen could happen. And that has been true throughout time. So what are trust, the idea that the families created, is that 100% of pregnant women will give birth one way or another. That's just true. Okay? It's just true. And giving birth is an activity that each woman does with her baby. That's true. It's an activity. If we have skills, we can work through the activity. When we lack skills, we suffer in that activity unless we have an easy birth. So the idea of the new childbirth trend is that 100% of pregnant women are going to give birth one way or another, Every pregnant woman is going to do the activity of giving birth with her baby. Every activity humans do is something that we pride ourselves if we have skills. We feel better if we have skills. Everything from having sex and being a good lover, to knowing how to cook, to knowing how to drive a car, to paint, to build a house, to be a parent, for goodness sakes. So birth should be elevated to a very one-off activity, an infrequent activity, something that we should be proud of having some skills to work through. This is the new trend. And so therefore, it should be normal and natural to self-learn birth and birth coaching skills in our pregnancy and then use those skills as our birth unfolds and we do the activity. Now, is this for the 100% of pregnant women? Absolutely, because our body whether we have a non-laboring cesarean or an unplanned cesarean. Our body, our hormones, everything about us is preparing to have a labor and a vaginal birth. It is normal and natural that pregnancy ends with birth. That's how we get out of being pregnant, right? So if we are having a non-laboring cesarean, that's our baby's birth. We got pregnant to have a baby, not a type of birth. So what we want to do is to learn the skills and then use those skills when we're driving to the hospital because that's our labor. Well, we're being prepped. That's our transition. And while we're lying on the table, even if we're numb from our boobs down, and we use the skills to work through the activity of birthing our baby. Because if we do that, then when our baby is born, we have finished this activity that we can't replay and we are ready now to use skills to parent our children. We do not have a skills-based approach to childbirth. We have a choice-based approach. And you, babies don't come to plan, and there's no way to know what your birth's going to be like. So when we have an idea that 100% of pregnant women will give birth, and it's an activity in which it should be normal and natural to learn skills and then use the skills, that includes all of us which means that all of us can have an empowered birth, whether we are afraid or not. We can be terrified. We can think at every single moment we are in that five minutes or that 12 hours that something terrible could happen. And in fact, for some of us, we have risks where that is a reality, where we have to be vigilant to the risks. So if we use skills to work through the activity, when we feel afraid, that gives us a grounding. That gives us a capacity to stay grounded. So I've passed my 20 minutes. <laughs> Sorry. So remember, gift is a fear. It, fear is a gift. We want to develop that gift. 
throughout life. It, it doesn't matter if you're pregnant, just develop it. Pay attention. This is a skill. You have to hone the skill. As you get better at it, you can understand more whether you're feeling overly anxious and that really something isn't going to immediately happen. And then you begin to put other skills in place, whether it's calming yourself or breathing or praying or whatever you do. Okay, If you do not develop a gift of fear, then you will go through life feeling constantly anxious or ignoring things that you should. Your children need to learn this gift. When's a good time to teach them? Well, children, us human beings, don't really develop reason until about the age of seven or eight. However, by the time we have kids we, that are crawling, we begin to start to teach them not to put things in their, art, their mouth. So we are teaching them that gift of fear, be thoughtful about what you put in your mouth, right? So these are examples that you can use throughout your, your life. Please pass this on. Look, I've been doing this for 50 years. I have been screaming down the pike for 50 years, and I'm just one voice. And I, our voice, this voice has not been heard because the natural birth movement became so global and so strong, and it gave us a message that pregnancy and childbirth are normal life events that rarely require medical care. And that idea and those words are not accurate. If you take a thousand women and put them in a room and they're all childbearing but none of them are pregnant, how many of them have health issues? How many have economic issues or substance abuse or abuse issues or living in poverty or famine or living in war? Okay. If they're all now pregnant, how many of them those problems could get worse in pregnancy or other problems or a problem with the baby come up or in birth, other problems may or may not come up. Pregnancy and childbirth are normal life events and that includes everything, everything, okay, everything. And we need to build systems on that reality. So having skills is one of those systems. We do better when we are skilled. It's just as simple as that. Thank you very much for listening. Please pass this on and please let people know about our trust and please let people know about birthing better. And comment, what do you want me to talk about? I'm talking into a void really, aren't I? So take care and stay well. Bye-bye. And by the way, we have a COVID quick course that I created and we also have a COVID course just about COVID that's on our YouTube channel, which is Birthing Better One on YouTube. Bye. See ya.